Hello, it's Halloween and this is Who's He at the Movies. And to celebrate this night of terror, I thought it would be prudent to watch Christopher Lee battling the forces of darkness. Yes, it's the 1968 Hammer Horror film, The Devil Rides Out. Based on Dennis Wheatley's book of the same name written in 1934, this film stars Christopher Lee as the Duke de Richelieu, who along with his friend Rix Van Rin, played by Leon Green, attempt to save a late friend's son, Simon Aaron, from the clutches of a devil-worshipping cult led by the charismatic Mokata, played by Charles Gray. As they battle Mokata for Simon's soul and for the soul of another initiate, Tanith, they face the devil himself, the angel of death, a giant spider and a demon in a red nappy. My last line there about the red nappy wearing demon may have sounded just a little flippant, but believe me, this is hands down my favourite horror film. While well, it doesn't have a single drop of blood or Kensington Gore, as they're known on display, quite rare for a hammer horror, this film goes for atmosphere and tension. And while the film may seem very tame, a little bit stagey, it's all posh people in stately homes, and some of the special effects may seem a little wonky by today's standards, the film just works. Directed by Hammer stalwart Terence Fisher, and with a screenplay by Richard I Am Legend Matheson, it's a very tight and fast-paced movie, where for me, not a single frame of film is wasted. It's also got a committed cast, where, to coin a phrase, hardly anyone phones it in. Well, with one exception, who I'll come on to later. But you may be able to tell, even at this early stage in this short review, I have somewhat of a love affair with this film. When I was growing up in the 1970s, horror films and books were all the rage. The rage of Payne's Book of Horror Stories with their striking front covers adorned bookshelves, and my personal favourite, Dennis Gifford's A Pictorial History of Horror Movies, was required playground reading, and is still a book I own to this day. But the big TV event on television, if, there, if you were a child of the 1970s and early 80s, was BBC Two's Saturday Night Horror Double Bill. This yearly season of films, which usually ran in the summer to early autumn months, aired the classic Universal and RKO horror films of the 30s and 40s, and sometimes even aired the occasional Basil Rathbone Sherlock Holmes film for some reason, and of course, Hammer Horror. But, well, despite my excitement at these films being aired on television, I was never actually allowed to stop and watch them. And on the very odd occasion where I was, and this is where I got my first glimpses of Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, Boris Karloff, Bella Lugosi, Lon Chaney Jr. Well, you get the picture. But the one film that members of my family, which my dad in particular, held in some reverence, was The Devil Rides Out. Now, my memory of this is a little hazy now, but I have a recollection of Dennis Wheatley's novel being shared amongst members of my family. As you remember what I said earlier, horror appeared to be all the rage in the 1970s. Now, I'm assuming it was my father who was given a copy of this book to read, but I don't think he ever actually read it, as he's not and still not much of a reader. The film, however, was a different story. And it's another one of those occasions where my father really built up the film so much, just like he did with uh, War Eagles Dare, it can only lead to a disappointment when I actually watched it. Well, this didn't turn out to be the case. I finally saw the film in my 20s, and I was certainly not disappointed. Everything people said it was, well, was. And there were two people who hold your attention in this film, and that is Christopher Lee and Charles Gray. Christopher Lee was one of those actors who, despite appearing in quite a few bad movies, was never actually bad in any of them. Like his Hammer compatriot Peter Cushing, he treated every role with the utmost seriousness, playing it as if it was Shakespeare. But he was mainly known for playing villains and really remembered for playing Count Dracula in several, several Hammer films of varying quality. However, in The Devil Rides Out, for once, he is the hero of the piece, and I wish he had played more roles of this type. In fact, I just wish he had played the Duke de Richelieu more on screen more than once. And after doing a bit of research, Dennis Wheatley did in fact write a series of books featuring this character, along with the other characters from this film, Rex Van Rin, Simon Aaron and Richard Eaton and Willie described them as his very own musketeers. So a chance to make a series of films was really there for the taking. But what pleased me is that this was reportedly Christopher Lee's favourite film that he starred in. And, well, really, I can see why. His character is authoritative, compassionate, and while not really a man of action, he is very heroic as well. But 
to the Duke de Richelieu's ying, we have Macarthur's yang. Charles Grey, otherwise known as the poor man's blowfelt from Diamonds Are Forever, plays him as a suave, charming and supremely confident villain who invites himself into people's homes and casually dismisses people from his presence as if they were a trifling inconvenience. Of course, this being Charles Grey, there is an element of camp to his performance, but here this works in contrast to Christopher Lee's stoic Duke de Richelieu. While not actually sharing that much screen time together during the course of the film, their performances provide you with enough information to know that Duke de Richelieu is fully aware and wary of MacArthur's power, while MacArthur knows exactly how powerful he is, and he knows that Richelieu knows it. Now, on to the supporting actors who play their parts extremely well, for Morris. Patrick Mower, in a very early role as the, as the naive Simon Aaron, provides solid support, as does Nikki Areggi as the aforementioned Tanith. Also appearing is Paul Eddington as Richelieu's old friend and sceptic of the group, Richard Eaton, and also Sarah Lawson as Richard's wife, Marie. Now, in fact, it is the characters of Tanith and Marie who are actually key in defeating MacArthur. I'm not wanting to spoil the film for you, and I don't know how much Richard Matheson's screenplay diverts from Wheatley's novel, but to have two women more or less what, saving the day, especially for a film made in the 1960s and also a film set in 1929, is one of the film's well, main strong points. Now, I come on to one of the film's not so strong points, Leon Green as Rex Van Rin. Leon Green was an actor, but mainly an opera singer, known for his work with Sadler's Wells and the well-known rhyming slang opera company, The Doily Cart. However, here he is asked to play the square-jawed hero, the punch-first, ask-questions-later type of character. Unfortunately, however, his character also blunders about and generally messes things up, such as, well, falling asleep when he is meant to be keeping watch on Tanith. And throughout all of this, Leon Green has one facial expression, blank. And to cap it off, he's also dubbed throughout the entire movie. Now, the reason for this is not really known, but some reports suggest he was dubbed due to the fact that he sounded like he was singing his lines. But who was the person who dubbed him? Well, that was Patrick Allen, who was the husband of Sarah Lawson, who played Marie. Now, Patrick Allen was a British character actor who was probably best known for a series of adverts in the 70s and 80s for building company Barrett Homes, where he attempted to convince people to buy a Barrett house while buzzing everyone in a helicopter. But Patrick Allen had a very, very distinctive voice, and his voice was used for something just as chilling as this movie, the protect and survive British public information film on how to survive a nuclear attack. Now, if you grew up in the 70s and 80s, this would chill you to the bone. Well, in fact, it still does. But anyway, back to the movie. If there is one scene that really stands out is MacArthur's black magic attack on our heroes towards the end of the film. Trapped in a magic circle for protection, our heroes face MacArthur's conjuring of the aforementioned giant spider, which, as an arachnophobe, I find bloody terrifying as it prowls around them trying to find a way through their circle of protection, and of course his summoning of the Angel of Death. Terence Fisher's use of sound and quick edits make this a really effective scene, which I think are mainly due to hide the shortcomings of the Angel of Death's costume, but don't let some of the cheapness put you off. It is still very, very effective. But if you're wanting something to watch this Halloween night, you should put this film on your viewing list. No Halloween night should pass without at least watching one Christopher Lee film, and so why not make it one where he isn't Dracula? So, grab your holy water, protect yourself within a chalk circle, cast your runes as the devil rides out tonight.